This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon and welcome to AI Answers, weekly updates and answers from the world's leading valuation authority. My name is Bill Garber, Director of Government and External Relations for the Appraisal Institute. Today is August 19th, 2020, and we're going to provide a quick legislative update on issues affecting the real estate valuation profession. Despite COVID-19, there has been a fairly active legislative year in Congress thus far. Of course, the House and Senate are right in the midst of debating and trying to reconcile a relief package relating to the coronavirus that involves extension of unemployment benefits and business liability limitation provisions, to name two issues. And those discussions are likely going to continue in the next few weeks and headed back into a session when they come back in September. Uh, as part of a funding bill in all likelihood um, to keep the government in operation. But in the interim, while some of those debates and discussions are taking place, we've seen a good deal of appraiser related legislation that we wanted to draw to your attention. In particular, while we're gonna talk about the Great American Outdoors Act, which is the biggest set of funds that supports real estate appraisals for federal agency acquisition uh, uh, for purchase and for easement purposes. A bill to help establish a portal for appraisal licensing, which has uh, been a priority for the Appraisal Institute for several years now, and also those that do right-of-way related work, the Reaffirming Property Rights Through Natural Gas Act Modernization Act, which is a bill that will be introduced upon uh, the, the uh, next, next uh, reopening of their session in September. And all three of these provisions have enjoyed Appraisal Institute support. So why don't I go ahead and get into these and explain them in a little bit more detail. First, the Great American Outdoors Act, uh, which started out as HR 1957 uh, and was signed into law by the president last month of, as public law 116-152. So in a nutshell, this reauthorizes a program called the Land and Water Conservation Fund. The LWCF is the, as I said earlier, the largest pool of federal dollars where real estate appraisal assignments comes from. It is supporting various programs within the Department of Interior and the Department of Agriculture. And the various programs that support acquisition, maintenance type activities in national parks, national forests, wildlife refuges, and recreation areas have been under fire for several years in Congress. And the Appraisal Institute uh, got involved very early on in support of the reauthorization and funding for the LWCF uh, through a coalition of conservation organizations. We've been a, a supporting organization to the LWCF coalition for several years, which has been working in the back, background in support of reauthorization and funding for these programs. And with this new law, the LWCF has, is uh, gonna see significant uh, support, financial support and backing uh, to the tune of a minimum of $900 million per year and as much as $9.5 billion over the next five years. So as appraisers, if you're doing work for various conservation-related activities, programs, and agencies, 
both at the federal and the state level, uh, the chances are, are pretty good that the, the programs are being supported by the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, there is a state side and a federal side to these programs. Some money is, is delivered through the states and state agencies, such as the Forest Legacy Program, while others are um, direct assignments from federal agencies, like uh, the National Park Service or the Fish and Wildlife Service. And the programs are also used to uh, support voluntary conserv conservation on private land. So if you're in the space of federal land acquisition, uh, in easements, right, uh, uh, easement type work, uh, park development activity, uh, and are looking at, at assignments through the various programs that support conservation, uh, this is a what, probably a crowning achievement for the conservation community for the year uh, and is going to help set up a significant amount of conservation work uh, over the next next decade uh, and something um, that appraisers should pay attention to the program itself does not see any policy changes here there are no appraisal provisions or policy appraisal policy changes within this legislation uh, it's a pretty clean title overall and providing authorization and funding for these activities. So in this space, the, the typical assignments that one might see are use path related work and, and also uh, overlays for uh, the yellow book uh, or the uniform appraisal standards for federal land acquisitions, that type of activity. So it'd be good to get brushed up on um, those types of standards. Um, the Appraisal Institute provides that type of education for those who are interested in it. Let me move on um, to the next bill, the Portal for Appraisal Licensing Act, H.R. 7688. This legislation, as I said, has been under development for several years. It's been a priority for the Appraisal Institute for some time now, I'm trying to bring some flexibility and some regulatory relief to appraisal practitioners. And that's something that we've been, been um, working out in direct consultation with various stakeholder entities, in particular the appraisal subcommittee, uh, as this legislation would charge the appraisal subcommittee with undertaking a good deal of responsibilities in establishing a a portal for appraisers to use in submission of appraisal licenses uh, and, and renewals uh, for those licenses. So in a nutshell, what this legislation proposes to do is establish uh, through the appraisal subcommittee, a central de depository for license and certification and registration applications and renewals. So, in the context of appraisal licensing, licensing under this bill would still occur at the state level, but what the legislation proposes to do is a create a essentially a software interface, an online interface for practitioners to go to and submit their applications and have that routed to the various states and the state appraiser licensing agencies that they wish to submit that to, <coughs> excuse me. So what it, what it tries to do is, and it proposes the appraisal subcommittee to provide connectivity with state appraiser and licensing agencies for access to all application and renewal information, including completed qualifying continuing education, experience logs, examination results, background check information where that's applicable and any other information that the appraisal subcommittee determines appropriate as part of an advisory group or with and alongside an advisory group that would be created moving forward so uh, in lockstep with that the the subcommittee would make available payment of all license and certification and registration fees and the delivery of letters of good standing to state appraiser certifying and licensing agencies and 
do so in a way that would enable those state agencies to access that information. So the states would still have their process and procedures. They'd still review the applications, but the idea here is that the portal would act as a go-between or a filter of sorts for the conveyance of application information to the state or between the appraiser applicant and the state regulatory agency. So it's similar in concept. It's not exactly like the nationwide multi-state licensing system or the NMLS, which is something that the was originally created by the mortgage originator community in a similar effort to try to get a multi-state licensing system put into place. Um, there's also an additional example of the National Association of Registered Agents and Brokers in the insurance space. And that too is a, is a proposition similar to this and trying to provide multi-state licensing uh, platform for practitioners to utilize where appraise, or where those individuals are licensed in more than one state. Yeah, and same, same idea is, is here, although it's a little different in the sense that, that appraisal has been in the federal legislative con construct since 1989 with FIREA, of course, and the establishment of a baseline level of licensure for federally related transaction type activity. So this is kind of a variant of that uh, to, some, to some extent. So it maintains that state functionality, but it attempts to create some efficiencies for the practitioners or those firms. I should say that's not just appraisers, but it includes appraisal management companies too and their registration processes who have similar types of requirements that they see with state appraiser regulatory agencies uh, and have to update those across state lines and conduct things like background checks. One item of note is that the legislation would authorize the appraisal subcommittee to utilize an existing platform. And that would be something like uh, a program like the, the nationwide multi-state licensing system. Um, as the legislation is written, uh, if the subcommittee felt that there were efficiencies with using an existing system, uh, it, it may do that under this authorization as it's written today, uh, or it authorizes them to, to develop one on their own moving forward. Some additional things that the legislation would do relating to background checks. This has been an issue that appraisers have faced for well, the last several years. Uh, states have put forward their own background check requirements put them into place, uh, appraisal management companies too, having background check requirements. So this would create or would authorize the appraisal subcommittee to be essentially a channeling agent for the delivery of the FBI level background check. And um, it would do so where states have those requirements in place. So it's not universal or uniform today, uh, whether a state has a background check requirement, but it would essentially make that available to states where that existed. And then an additional benefit to appraisers is the legislation makes clear that that background check would satisfy the requirements for third party oversight obligations that federally regulated financial institutions face from uh, the bank regulatory agencies like the OCC, the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC. There's been some guidance that's been put out in recent years to require third-party oversight mechanisms, and that has resulted in background check requirements being imposed on a whole variety of third-party vendors, but extending to real people like real estate appraisers or appraisal firms that are doing work for financial institutions. So one of the, the great benefits of this legislation would that, that this FBI level background check would satisfy that requirement for a third party oversight that's imposed by those agencies, uh, which would help to reduce the number and the frequency of those background checks that appraisers face today. In addition, uh, for the purpose of education information maintained by the portal, a state appraiser certifying and licensing agency may notify the portal of a particular course that has been approved by the agency and education providers. And state appraiser certifying and licensing agencies may submit 
to the portal lists of individuals who have completed such courses. So um, the idea there would be that there'd be a wider, uh, more generally available list of the approved courses that are available and have been taken by the individuals. Essentially, the concept is for a, a log of the education that the appraiser has completed to be available and downloadable um, to the state appraiser licensing agency. States' rights is also another uh, it's a big topic whenever you talk about legislation like this, and this bill does intend to have no effect on states' rights. Um, the provisions state that um, states shall retain the ability to act independently upon license certification and registration applications and renewals for appraisers and AMCs. Um, the treatment of fees, state credentialing fees, and any state-specific information shall continue to be provided to states by appraisers and, and AMCs, but transmitted through the portal via a streamlined process and application. Um, so it, it, imagine a Amazon-level uh, checkout where you're submitting um, your your applications are the items that are being checked out to, let's say, the state of Colorado and the state of Tennessee as two. Um, appraisers would still pay those fees and they would be authorized, the, the ASC would be authorized to charge a portal delivery fee, but the appraiser would only have to do that in a single instance, um, in theory under this bill, and submit only uh, for one background check, rather than today where they would have to do that separately via two different states uh, and potentially undergo background check requirements um, where, where those exist across the country and um, do that under separate obligations or separate processes. So the idea here would be to streamline the essentially the back office um, overhead type work that's being done today um, and, and hopefully result in, in lower uh, reduced um, require, or obligations relating to the, the red tape involved with license application and renewal. Now all this would involve an advisory committee, the subcommittee would have to set up an advisory committee to do this um, with stakeholder groups like the Appraisal Institute and others. And um, they would also allow for um, grants. So one of the big things, questions that might come from, from state regulators is whether this is an unfunded mandate. And the legislation has made clear that the subcommittee can make grants available to those agencies to support um, the efforts of state agencies to connect with state systems um, with the portal. So that there's a level of financial support or a carrot, if you will, for the states to participate um, through some of the financial assistance that's available um, through the appraisal subcommittee. So this legislation um, touches on some, some positive aspects for appraisers. It Its goal is to reduce red tape for the practitioners and for firms, appraisal firms, that are seeing more uh, uh, regulatory in, uh, uh, impositions on them in recent years and to try to streamline that working within the existing system in a productive and a proactive fashion. The legislation has just been introduced. There have not been a, any hearings on this yet, although it has been discussed in at least two other oversight hearings that the House Financial Services Committee has held in recent years. So there is some legislative history built in and around this. Um, the, the, the observation would be that this is not something likely to see action before the end of this session, but it is likely to be become part of the conversation in the next session of Congress when it convenes um, early next year. It's certainly something the Appraisal Institute will be working on and, and with the stakeholder groups, the, the subcommittee and the state uh, regulatory agencies in particular in the coming months. So uh, please check out HR 7688, the PAL Act, the aptly named PAL Act. And we are urging our professionals to contact their representatives to voice their support for this legislation by co-sponsoring the bill in the House. And there is information on that and how you can contact your representatives on the Appraisal Institute's website, the advocacy section in particular. Uh, moving on, last but not least, the 
issue of natural gas pipelines has been in the news in recent years and has raised some concerns about private property rights. It's been the subject of Hollywood movies and the like. And there's been a bill that has been announced for introduction. The bill actually is pending um, the, the Senate um, coming back from their recess right now, but we understand um, definitively from Senator Wine, uh, Ron Wyden's office that he will be introducing the reaffirming property rights through Natural Gas Act Modernization Act, which is intending to advance several reforms, the public interest reforms relating to natural gas pipelines and the processes that are before the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission or involve the, the FERC agency. So um, some of the things that it does is it, it would establish a clear public interest balancing test um, to guide FERC in their decisioning processes. It uh, would codify straightforward responsibilities of gas developers and FERC in their uh, by standardizing communication to landowners and setting time limits on FERC actions. And it would also set a strict standard for companies to receive all regulatory permissions before exercising eminent domain. And to the appraisal process, it would guarantee landowners a right to a robust appraisal process if the property is to be condemned, ensuring just compensation. So the legislation um, drives at or, or tries to make consistent the processes that are used by FERC and, and employ or overlay similar processes as you might see in the Uniform Relocation Act, which is, it is overseen or administered by the U.S. Department of Transportation. There's a series of requirements that are fairly straightforward um, to appraisers in, this, in that type of space that um, require the condemning agencies to undertake a, a robust, a thoughtful appraisal process uh, in, in delivering offers of just compensation, and that includes thorough appraisals in accordance with generally accepted appraisal standards, as well as an opportunity for the property owner to accompany the appraiser on upon the inspection of the and the site visit of the property. Those are two key central tenets to the Uniform Relocation Act. And those those tenants are have been carried forward here in this legislation. Um, and would and would require similar level of activity, standards, obligations, and uh, permissibility of, of accompaniment um, in in that process with FERC. Um, so the the obviously for from a public um, uh, excuse me from a pr private property rights aspect, the goal here is to enhance um, private property owners or the Sponsors are attempting to level the playing field where it may be a little unlevel today. Um, the appraisal process that in, typically involves a Natural Gas Act project will have kind of murky valuation uh, obligations with it. And um, the process is rather stilted in favor of the company, which is using or leveraging the power of eminent domain um, in, in their potential actions. And um, as we've reviewed it, um, it's come clear to us that having a more defined and a more level playing field relative to the valuation process would be in the best interests of um, private property protection and ultimately in, in the public interest as well. So uh, we have been, we are in support, the Appraisal Institute stands in support of um, this legislation and particularly the uh, appraisal requirements that are contained within it. So um, those are three um, directly related, appraisal related measures that have been enacted into law or have just been introduced or will be introduced uh, in this, in this um, session when the Senate comes back uh, from recess that are all very positive to the appraisal community, to the appraisal profession, and standing in strong interest to things like regulatory relief and private property rights protection.
Well, for more information on these and other measures, you can always visit the Appraisal Institute at appraisalinstitute.org and our advocacy section, Appraiser News Online, and of course, on our YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn channels, our social media channels, where you can find additional AI answers and other Appraisal Institute programming. So with that, I bid you a good afternoon and please stay safe and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us today.